All right, let's take a look at a cool new component that leverages some new Spring 20 capabilities. Got three accounts here, one that's cold, one that's hot, one that doesn't have any rating, but is site foo, whatever that means. Uh, and I want to run a flow. And this flow, you'll notice that it doesn't have any get records because when we run this, we are going to set our query up as we run the flow. So this flow is completely dynamic. The person running the flow can go here, can select the count, can pick the fields they want, can select, let's say, rating equals hot. They can put a limit on the query. They can order it by any field they want and in any direction they want. And then when we run this, the flow carries out the query. This flow carries out the query and returns a single record. Good old 9TLUQ. And if we go take a look, Sure enough, 9TLUQ, that is the hot account. So what we have here is a query building tool. Uh, and we can change this. We can go cold or uh, and we get uh, LYQ. So we get a different record there. And we can do fancy stuff like custom one or two and three. And we can add some stuff. And foo bar. Uh, so we've got custom queries in here now. And uh, we've got multiple operations types, including in and not in. Uh, so a lot of good. SQL query capabilities uh, that uh, are here. So how is this working? Let's take a look at closer look at the flow. There's two components here. The part you just saw is a new flow screen component called SQL Query Builder. Uh, and it is a LWC component that you can install. Very simple component. It basically just takes a label, uh, you pass it in a SQL string, and it will try and parse it. Um, and you will output whatever the user creates there. Now, what are we doing with this query string? This flow screen component comes packaged with this flow process action called oh, you can see I'm really really failing it here on the alignment uh, called execute SQL so I have this SQL query action here and it's pretty simple it's taking that query string and it's carrying out now I did have to lock in the the S object that I wanted to pass it this flow now allows collection processors like this one to work with any S object but you do have to pick it so let's actually undo this uh, and let me show you how that's created so now I can I'm going to create recreate it here and let's call it do query this time so I have to pick which object which s object this action is going to take as uh as, as a parameter this is going to be an output this is basically saying i'm going to do an s SQL query it's going to kick out some accounts so i can do that here and then once i select accounts i get the actual parameters are available to me so it's kind of two phases first you select the account and I've got my query string here 
Okay, and then I can hook this back up. And I'm back in business. And let's go here and let's add that back in. Let's go find good old do query. I'm using an automatic output here and I'm just automatically setting it here. And you, you notice I didn't have any any variable. Uh, I didn't create a variable when I wanted to go. Uh, a couple of observations here. One is that this has to be set to the same thing that your execute Sokol is set to or uh, things will go south fast uh, but of course you could have m more than one of these you could have a decision element uh, you could uh, and you don't even have you don't have to use this execute Sokol at all you might want to take the Sokol string that comes out of here and uh, save it to a record or something so um, that's something to keep in mind though the another another consideration here is that one of the places this will become quite useful is by the end of the year we will make we will extend custom property editors to actions that use dynamic s objects in other words collection processors like the execute so cool and what uh, we're envisioning is that this will not just be a screen component that you can use when you run a flow it will also be the property editor uh, that you see when you double click right here so right here instead of this you would see all of the UI would be right here so you would be able to use it at design time as well uh, a third observation is that uh, the we expect that we expect that some people will say you know this is this is this is okay but uh, we need to be able to do more complex SQL queries we need to be able to do joins uh, we need to be able to work with related records uh, so that is an obvious place where this will need to be extended and feedback on the way we should prioritize that uh, would be welcome and if you're interested in helping extend this then um, then uh, speak up about that as well. So uh, here's something fun to work with and uh, hope you enjoy it.